Hello and welcome back to the series where I rank all of Ash's gym battles. Today I'm going to be talking about his Unova League gym battles, probably the series that has the most critiques, but still a lot of enjoyable moments. Please check out the first four parts if you haven't already, when I ranked the first four region gym battles, and of course hit the like button if you want to see me rank the Kalos gym battles. I'm going to be ranking his first badge battles separately, as he chose to face off against all three of Silen, Chili and Cress, so they will all count as separate battles despite being for the same badge. Coming in last place is Ash vs Cress. This battle was a massive indication that Pikachu's power scaling was going to be very messy in this series. Firstly of course it lost to a level 5 Snivy a few episodes ago, but it didn't have its electric attack so I suppose at least there's an excuse. For this battle there's no excuse at all, Pikachu had the tight matchup and this really was a battle it should have won. It got taken out easily by a Mud Sport and Water Gun combo, something it would have easily dodged in previous regions. I really disliked the battle, Pikachu had only just taken down a Latios in the previous season and now it's losing to a Pampal. Number 10 is Ash vs Silent. This battle is better than the Crest battle but it still has many issues. Ash picks Oshawott to take on Silent's Pansage, which wasn't the best decision. The whole gym just seemed a bit backwards for me. Tepig battle was fine how it was but Pikachu should have won and Oshawott should have lost here. It was just a strange gym battle altogether. Pansage used the field to its advantage by dodging water guns by jumping on the rocks which was cool and then he went on for a fully sun powered solar beam which would have been sure to knock out Oshawott but somehow Oshawott deflects it with his shell. I thought this was slightly overpowered that Oshawott is just able to deflect pretty much any attack he wants just by using its shell. Oshawott manages to finish off Pansage with razor shell but overall this battle just wasn't good in my opinion. In number 9 is Ash vs Lenora. Ash's second gym battle was again not a great one. Ash was frustrating in this episode and he got thrown off by Lenora's raw and mean look tactic which was probably the highlight of the battle. Ash didn't knock out either of Lenora's Pokemon in this battle, he didn't really show up any urgency to mix up strategies like we're used to seeing and he just didn't seem himself. Oshawott was thrown off by being brought in early by the raw and Tepig tried its hardest but it just wasn't enough. This battle was once again disappointing. Number 8 is Ash vs Chili. This battle was actually better than I remembered. It was Ash's first battle against the trio and he was facing off against Chili. He chose Tepig because he swore to Tepig that it would be the first Pokemon he uses in a gym battle, which was a nice touch. The battle didn't last too long but Ash actually had a decent strategy with Tepig using the holes that Pansir had already created. We've seen this play by Ash before against Jasmine using Cyndaquil. Tepig quickly finished off Pansir with an Ember and Tackle combination sending it back into the wall. This battle was short but sweet. Number 7 is Ash vs Elisa. This battle certainly is a strange one. It's famously known for its low points. Ash goes into thinking he needs to come up with some great plan to defeat her, but he really doesn't. Ash is best at thinking on the spot, and the fact that he planned it out made him perform worse. This actually reminded me of Jaden from Yu-Gi-Oh GX when he came up against Zayn trying to use his head and it got him into the bad position. Ash went into the battle with just his Palpitoad. He didn't even bring any other backups, that was the frustrating part. This is unlike Ash to think he can only just rely on one strategy and one Pokemon. Palpitoad did very well against Seb Striker, but it got taken out by Elisa's Emolga. He quickly ran back to get Snivy and then he also forgot that Attract didn't work on same gender Pokemon. Fortunately Pikachu felt the same pain as us while watching Ash make these poor decisions. Pikachu shocked him back to his old self in a really good moment actually. If it wasn't for this moment in the battle, it could be way lower. Pikachu came in to be Ash's final Pokemon, made quick work of Emolga with just one quick attack, really showing its power, and then it dealt with Tynamo's speed nicely by clobbering it with an Iron Tail. The battle itself was very poor, but I'm just glad at least Pikachu had some nice moments in this battle. Next up is Ash vs Skylar. Skylar was introduced as a gym leader who didn't like battling anymore. She preferred her way of battling in her head, because she already knew how the battle would turn out, apparently. This was something I really disliked, there should never be a gym leader who doesn't want to battle, and despite Silent trying to convince her, she still didn't really learn until Ash stopped, stepped in. The battle itself was pretty average to me, if you want a really good flying type battle, I'd choose to watch Ash vs Winona over this one. It started off with Crocorot getting easily taken down by Skylar's Swoobat, but Tranquil came in and managed to overcome it. Franco was pretty much the star of the show in this battle. Pikachu put in a good performance against Skylar's Unpheasant, but I expected it to do a little bit better against Swanner, having the 4x type advantage. 
The finale was Tranquil vs Swanner, and I have to give this bit credit. It was a nice aerial battle at the end, with Ash's Tranquil evolving into Unpheasant and learning Aerial Ace to take down Swanner. At this point, I was kind of bored of Pokemon evolving mid gym battle, as you'll find out in my later choices, so this one didn't have as big an impact on me. Overall, it was de a decent battle, but as I said before, Winona did it better. Number 5 is the Ash vs Lenora rematch. After some intense training, Ash returned to face Lenora. This battle was slightly better than the first one, but still wasn't without its flaws. Oshawa and Tepig have both gotten a lot faster and stronger, and Oshawa even learned a new move, Aqua Jet, but it hadn't mastered control on it just yet. So the battle with Watchog was kind of a mess. It ended with Oshawa accidentally colliding with its Aqua Jet into Watchog, and it knocked itself out and Watchog. Tepig came in and shown how strong it had gotten. It used its pace to dodge Herdia's Shadow Balls, and in the end it came down face to face Giga Impact versus Flame Charge, and Tepig came out on top. It could have gone either way really, because both Pokemon were really worn out. This battle was decent, but nothing spectacular. Coming in number 4 is Ash vs Bryson. Ash's 7th gym battle against Bryson. This battle wasn't too bad. They battled on a cool IC battlefield, which kind of looked like a hockey rink. Ash's Scraggy put in a decent performance by taking down Vanillish. The early battles in this match were quite underwhelming. The battle didn't really get going until Ash brought out his Pig Knight. It managed to stop Cryogonal from spinning by using its Fire Pledge on the centre of his body. The next matchup was Crocorock vs Beartick. This was the real highlight of the battle. Crocorock showed really great determination, and it shows why I believe it's Ash's best unit of a Pokemon by far. Ash had also learned from Bianca a move that she used in the tournament and he copied, and had Crocorock use Stone Edge and grab hold of the stones and use them in one final attack on Beartick. The finale was cool, but the rest of the match didn't hold up for me. Definitely, if you compare this to the other ice battles such as Candice or Price, I don't believe it was up to the same standard. Coming in number 3 is Ash vs Roxy. There was quite a lot I liked about this battle. The fact that Ash was facing off against a brand new gym leader introduced in Black 2 and White 2, as his 8th and final battle was cool. It was something we'd never seen before. And the battlefield was incredible. Just like in the games, it was like a rock concert with loads of cheering fans. It had a great atmosphere and also a scoreboard, which was also a nice touch in any battle. Roxy told Ash that she's only going to use 3 Pokemon and Ash gets to use all 6. This was interesting but also disappointing. It shows how weak Ash's unit team really was compared to Hoenn where he had 5 and 5 battle against 1 for his final badge. This was a bit underwhelming for the final gym battle. The battle itself had some nice moments, Coffin using its speed was really cool, and Roxy's Garboda using its body to stretch and dodge a lot of attacks was a nice touch. A lot of Ash's Pokemon got easily taken out, and that was the biggest letdown. For most of them it only took a few attacks and they were done. The two standouts for Ash were Pig Knight and Pikachu. Pikachu finished off Garboda at the end with an Electro Ball to seal Ash the win. The battle was really nicely animated and the pacing was really good. Probably the best of all the Unova battles, but it's a real shame it wasn't a 6 on 6. It probably would have got the top spot if it was a 6 on 6. It would have been the first ever full gym battle. In number 2 is Ash vs Clay. Before watching this, I had a feeling that this battle would be high. It's a very enjoyable battle. Ash pretty much comes up with all the right decisions and matchups in this battle. He first he sent out Oshawott, who finally puts in a great performance in the gym, using its water gun to drain away Clay's sandstorm on the field and then hitting Crocorock when it goes underground using Dig by using the water gun through the hole, something once again we've seen done before. Next up was Palpatode for Clay, but Oshawa had put in enough work already so it went down easily to Palpatode. Ash brought out Snivy who was 4 times effective, once again a great decision by Ash, and then he used Attract which completely took Clay by surprise. So yet another decision by Ash, and then it was just an easy Leaf Storm to finish off Palpatode. Clay's last Pokemon was Excadrill, Ash really struggled to deal with its powerful horn drill and drill run attacks. Snivy was taken down easily, so Ash brought in his Rog and Roller, who absolutely tanked all of Extra Deal's attacks, which caused it to evolve into Boldor. It came down to a Rock Smash on Rock Smash Showdown, and of course Boldor won, maybe a little too easily, but this was still a great battle, and it deserved to be this high. It was a nice touch having Ash's Pokemon evolve mid gym battle, but I still think this was done better in another battle. Coming in first place, something that really surprised me is Ash vs Berg. Ash's third gym battle and it was awesome. 
After two very average gyms that came before, it finally felt like we had gotten back to the battles of old, the ones we were all used to. Ash felt more like himself in this battle, with quick thinking and great strategies. Being a bug type gym, you'd think Tepig would have been the most important of Ash's Pokemon, but it got taken out early by getting drawn in by Berg's Dwebble and then being hit with Rock Wrecker. This was a really cool strategy by Berg. Next came out Ash's newly caught Sawaddle, and it made a massive impact. Ash had it use String Shot to move around the battlefield freely without getting hit. This was very smart. And then with a flurry of Razor Leaf attacks and a final tackle, it took out Dwebble before it could get back to its rock. Ash was ruthless here and he was back on form. Berg sent out Whirlipede who used its spinning body to deal with Swaddle's string shot. And then it went for a Solar Beam. Swaddle took the Solar Beam and evolved into a Swadloon, which was a pretty decent evolution mid gym battle. It learned Energy Ball and managed to defeat Whirlipede. Swadloon performed excellently in this battle, but of course it couldn't do much more against Berg's ace Leovani and its own evolved form. Oshawott came out of its Pokeball and wanted to be Ash's final Pokemon. I'm so glad that that didn't happen. Ash picked Pikachu and finally, the third gym, Pikachu gets its moment to shine. It used Berg's own Leaf Storm to cut the strings that it was trapped in, and then it used its speed to get the advantage, finish off Leovani with an Iron Tail, followed by an Electro Ball. Pikachu was really good in this battle and it was about time too. Overall, this battle was pretty incredible, it had a bit of everything. So what did you make of my list? Let me know in the comments. What are your rankings? This was super hard to rank because there's no real standout battles for me. The Univa gyms are probably some of the most average gym battles overall, apart from Kanto of course. Hit the like button if you want to see me rank the Kalos gym battles, one that I'm really looking forward to doing. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy and I'll see you next time.